wanted to start off with asking you a question, Katrina, about the company Stitch Fix. Um, Stitch Fix is a personal stylist for every woman. Um, the way it works is we have clients who will sign up and let us know their general size and style preferences. They schedule a date on which they want to receive a Stitch Fix. And then we have stylists who will kind of pick out five items for them to try on at home. So you can kind of choose what preferences you like, what types of clothes you want, what price range you want, and the stylist will do their best to send you things she thinks she's gonna, that she thinks you're gonna love and you simply buy what you keep, send back what you don't want, um, and it's super easy and at price points that average around $50 or $55, so at a price point that more people can afford than kind of historic personal shopping services. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the whole concept is, I think, a brilliant idea, um, and especially I, I love the idea of community of women and women helping other women, and, but what made you even come up with this type of idea? Yeah, there are a few inspirations. So I started the company about four years ago now. Um, and um, some of the inspiration was really just that the process of shopping is broken. Um, so certainly there's a part of shopping that's fun and that people love to do. But at the end of the day, what women really want is they want a dress they feel confident in. They want a blouse that they feel great in when they're in an interview. Um, and even though there's a lot of technology, I felt like a lot of it was addressing a broken process. Like, do you really want an app that helps you navigate a mall better? Or do you really want a way to see all of the dresses under $50 on the whole planet? And um, at the end of the day, I felt like there was a better way to be able to, um, to kind of serve clients better. Um, and I think also I was really inspired, ironically, by kind of what brick and mortar used to be. Um, the, service level isn't what it used to be and um, while e-commerce is very convenient and it's brought in all of kind of apparel available to people online um, I think you know a lot of times the quandaries that you have with clothes are like I'm going to a beach wedding but I want to have my arms covered and I'm looking for a flowy dress but you know all of these things that are really hard to google for and really hard to filter for and you know how can you kind of get help to feel feel and look your best every day. Um, so those were those were a couple of the inspirations. And I guess the third one I should mention is that my sister is, I'm definitely not the fashionista <laughs> of my family. My sister um, has always been somebody who, you know, you're like, Chelsea, you look amazing. And she's like, oh, this old thing, I bought this from H&M two years ago and I got these, you know, oh, these, yes. these pants 70% off and, you know, I'd been stocking them for months and I finally found them. And she's just one of these people who, you know, loves shopping, does it all the time and is an amazing stylist. She always looks great. She has a super curated closet and you know she's been living in New York looking fabulous on a shoestring budget her whole life and so um, I'm really lucky to have somebody like her. I would say like where did you buy those? Send me everything you're buying. <laughs> Just forward it to me um, and I could get her to do that for me but how can everybody kind of have access to somebody who can help them like I'm seeing booties everywhere but how do I actually wear them or like what kind of how do I actually cuff my jeans and all of these questions I think that people have of how to kind of pull things together together and being able to kind of you know marry all of that together to be kind of a better way to shop um, and also a way that is um, kind of with you know the not just buying items but really buying the styling and being able to feel like you can pull things together and look great every day. One of the things that I know with retail what you said has changed is that you know Nordstrom always has the amazing customer service but I do feel that some retailers are, are lacking in that area mm -hmm. so I think the idea of meeting that with a personal stylist is fantastic. Sure and even like when you have amazing customer service I mean the historical element of like when you walk into like a Nordstrom or a Gap really like why don't they know what you bought in the past like why don't they know what you left in your cart um, why don't they know what you've been pinning to Pinterest and we can actually marry all of that so it's really a much higher level of personalization and really a relationship that you can kind of build over time right. um, and it's just really hard to do that in a brick and mortar environment without having all of that history and without having all of the data that you can have when you're working online. So with the stylist that you have, it's it's very one-on-one. -on -one. It is like a, a personal stylist that knows that I don't like dresses, but I like pants, that I like certain color shirts, or I like certain accessories, and I don't like other accessories. I love the way you guys do it in regards to the questions that you ask. But how, how do you think your service has actually even helped getting to know the consumer better in regards to what women want and what women don't want? 
Yeah, and so one of the amazing parts and part of the reason that we're located in California and close to Silicon Valley is because what we do is really in combination with kind of the data and algorithm side of our business. So we have a guy named Eric Colson who used to run all of data and algorithms at Netflix who leads up that team for us here. And we're able to use that data to be able to help our buyers buy better and to help our stylists style better. And so when you're filling out that profile, it helps our buyers to know like, okay, you know, 10% of my jeans need to be in a 32 versus a 27 versus a, you know, 29 and all these are the inseams I need and all that data helps us to be able to kind of have the right assortment. Um, and on the styling side, the stylist has this algorithm at her fingertips. So it's still totally up to her and there's always Always going to be things that she's going to be the best at interpreting. Like looking at a Pinterest board, she's going to be the one who's going to be able to say like, oh, I've been seeing that you've been pinning a lot of textured sweaters and I see that you're doing a lot of leather details and she can kind of help curate based on that. Um, but she is, you know, if you say I'm just looking for some blouses to go back to work, the algorithm actually is able to learn from people who have similar bodies to her, from people who've had similar purchase history with her. And the algorithm may be able to help her to know which one is going to fit your body best and which one is going to be best for you. Um, so everything that, you know, we do is really kind of this combination of art and science um, and that we're really able to use science to help kind of our buyers and our stylists kind of be their best. And I think even the information that you're gathering, your buyers, I mean, I know manufacturers would probably love some of the content that yeah. you have because as a designer, you're trying to foresee what the you know what the buyers are. Absolutely and it's amazing I mean a lot of times and we work with over 200 vendors and you know many here in LA yeah. um, and um, when our vendors sell to traditional retailers they have no idea why something worked or didn't work so they might have something that you know they thought was going to be great and it didn't work and for us we actually have that data because our customers let us know why something's working or not working and so we can know like oh well that cardigan they were obsessed with it but like the sleeves were in an awkward length or or, you know, they would have loved this sweater if it was in a different colorway. And we have all this amazing data so that when somebody loves something or doesn't love something, we actually can learn from the why. And it's definitely part of the discovery process. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.